And the most important thing is to keep each layer wet. Now today what I want to do is show how I make carbon fiber laminate. And the carbon fiber laminate that I make is made from resin and cloth that you can purchase commercially. You can buy it relatively inexpensively on eBay. For a few bucks more you can buy it through Amazon. All of the products shown on this are things you can buy online relatively inexpensively to make your own carbon fiber parts. And I'll show some of the parts I've made over the years, some of the things you can do with it, but the basic 101 of all carbon fiber stuff is to be able to make laminate, make a sheet of carbon fiber. Now, truth in advertising, you can just buy carbon fiber sheets, but then you could buy carbon fiber parts. So that would kind of be something you want to pick the level at which you'd like to participate in making the parts. Now, in my case, I want to make some parts for this motorcycle over the winter. It's not winter yet, but I want to make the laminate, make a couple of sheets of it over the next couple of days and have it all set to go because I want to make some kind of a little piece that goes up here. I want to make the piece that goes behind the license plate. I have a couple other little things and I haven't really decided which ones I really want to do and which ones I'm going to buy commercially like the Graves uh, license plate eliminator that worked out great. But I want to make the part that the license plate attaches to. So anyway, without spending a lot of time here, I want to show some of the things that I've made already so you can get an idea of where this is going. And then we'll end the video by making a sheet of laminate. And it's not a very hard thing to do. You have to take a couple of precautions. I'll try not to leave out any steps. So this is bike is very new, my MT-09. And you can see, I don't want to have this. Well, I'm going to make a piece a little bit bigger than the license plate. Maybe even leave it an inch longer. So I can put a reflector or something down there, or whatever. I, I haven't really figured that out yet. But I've got to start with a sheet of laminate. And that's what I'm going to try to show in this video, is how to make the laminate. Another thing I thought might be one of the choices in the future, I would laminate carbon over this. So that piece would be carbon fiber, and then it would match the part I'm going to make up here. Now, I don't know exactly what I'm going to do yet. That's why I'm going to make a sheet, and I have a really cool idea in my mind, but a lot of times you have an idea, and when you see it in real life, you, mm, so you make it over, and then you make it over. And actually, one of the things I do have is some carbon fiber that every other thread is blue, but I don't think it matches this exactly, so maybe we'll just go with black carbon twill. Now, when it actually comes time to make that part, and again, we're going to be probably doing that at some future time because we're still in a riding season, I want to go over that step by step by step of how I did it and I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do yet. I've been making cardboard patterns. I've been trying to make a little fake windshield but I've never found anything that really I'm really in love with and all of the commercial ones to me well they don't suit my needs. I, I always prefer to have something totally custom if possible. Now on the FCR I made this piece with a mold. This is a custom piece. This is a part I made that backs up the license plate and you can put four screws in. It's nice and solid then. So that's something I want to have on that bike. And I don't want that, I don't even have the license plate yet. That's a problem because it's basically a new bike still. Now on last year's restoration, there were some parts that were unavailable. I wound up making them, the carbon fiber, the little boot heel peel up pads, I guess you would call them. We did this all on video on last year's restoration. I had to make this part which was not commercially available, that covers a, the front part of the shock up. And again, that part is all on the previous videos, all of this stuff. Actually, if it's not on the motorcycle channel, there's, a, there's on our thousand model airplane videos, it has a lot of carbon fiber work too. Now the nose piece that I just laminated carbon fiber over the original part, I thought that added a nice detail touch, among other things. And this is a part that's usually plastic on a bike, and I made it out of carbon fiber to hold the clock. And there's, there's no end to the amount of stuff you can do once you can make your own carbon fiber parts. And if the two choices are you can make flat sheets and then cut parts out, like you're baking cookies, or you can take parts that you already have and laminate carbon fiber over them. And this basically is going to be the same procedure on both. And I did this with the FZR when it was the Ferrari bike. I had the carbon fiber windshield on it. It turned out the thing that was a downside of it was that it was it obscured some of the video I was trying to shoot. So we went with a different type of windshield when we did that restoration. That was two years ago. 
And even on a, one of our GS's, the spare one, I have carbon fiber starter covers. All stuff that I've made over the years. So I do have a picture in my mind of some of the other little parts I'd like to make for this bike. But again, I've got to start somewhere. Today is a rainy day. I can't ride. It's still in the riding season. So what I plan on doing is just showing and demonstrating how to make your own carbon fiber laminate material. And it's pretty easy. It's not really hard. Now on the R1, when I originally bought it, and this was the very, when they first came out with the cross plane, these parts were not available. I think they're available now. But we've wound up, I wound up in the end, making all my own stuff. And I think all of that is still on the video too. Now I know most of my friends prefer just buying these parts off the internet or eBay or whatever, but I do get a lot of satisfaction out of being able to make my own parts. And sharing the information of how to make them. So step one is I need to get a piece of glass or a mirror or something very flat. Let's see which side it is. This has all epoxy on it already. We've already used this. And this is the PVA that's coming off from the previous use. So it's real easy. This is easy to figure out. Use the other side of the glass. But I don't want to have... I want this side to be as smooth as possible. Huh? See, there's some little stuff on there. And I'll clean this. Because what's going to happen to one side, and I'll make this, of course, so both sides are as smooth as possible. And I set this up. I want one side to be as smooth as possible. Just like if I was making a mold for a propeller or a cowling or some model airplane part, which we've done an awful lot of. And by the way, a lot of that stuff is on our model airplane channel. It does really complex things like making propellers and different tune pipes, exhaust pipes. That stuff is high tech. This is not high tech. Relatively simple. So I got these used pieces of glass. And by the way, never throw a mirror or anything away because this is this is stuff you can use. So, and I'm going to show this. I only want to show. I got to do two of them, but I'll do the first one. Now, this is the side that's relatively clean. A little bit of car wax, and it doesn't matter what kind of car wax. Even though some people like professionals, there there are things you can buy that are made mold. It's carnauba wax or pure carnauba wax. This seems to work just as good. I want to do this three times. I'm going to do it once, let it dry, go work on the other piece, and at the end of this I'm going to wind up with three coats of wax on this before I put the PVA down. And this is just to let the glass release off the part without cracking. Now it is important to get all the wax off. You don't want to leave any of the residual wax on there. You just want the wax, just like you were waxing your car, that last, especially carnauba wax, you don't want to have that residual on there. So once these are clean, and we have one side of each piece of glass or mirror, or this could be a mold. Because in essence, we are making a mold. I only need one side clean. By the way, this one, the reason this is here, we use this glass to do the gold paint test when I was making a gold paint for that, the, uh, the 650 restoration last year. And those wheels turned out to be one of the highlights, the gold paint turned out to be one of the highlights of the bike. But again, it's all on the channel. We share it with everybody. And I thank everybody that posts stuff because I have learned so much from YouTube. I'm more than happy to, to put back into the kitty. All right, this is a release agent, polyvinyl alcohol, PVA. Anybody that doesn't is not familiar with it. It's relatively inexpensive. It gives you full directions, but there's a simple thing. You can brush this on. Yeah, there are a lot of ways to do this. But the best way is if you can get a spray gun and spray it on. This is water soluble, so when you're all done, of course, clean everything with water. Now, because I don't have a spray gun set up, I just put this in what amounts to be a Windex bottle. Sometimes you can get away with this. Sometimes they don't adjust right. We just It's just easier than brushing it on. And this is going to dry hopefully nice and flat. It usually takes about an hour to dry. So the first thing I want to do is roll out from our roll. And thank you, Dave Midgley and Dick Hewitt, who supplied the material for this job and for, for basically all of our jobs. Now I want to make I want to make this piece of laminate five layers thick. So what I need to do is figure out, basically on this, 
where I'm going to be are right about there. So I can, it can, this will be perfect. I get one, two, three, four. So I, I need to make, here, and here's an easy way to do it. Not the only way, but this is a real easy way to do this. Whenever you have carbon fiber, it's always going to want to pull away at the edge and unravel. On one end is a Kevlar string. So I know I need 18 inches by 24. So let me just, let's just figure this out roughly. I'm going to be there. And there's always, of course, always over on this. Just measure this up. And this just roughly is where I want to have it. So that means the ruler can go there. Get the wrinkles out. And I do want the, what I'll call the grain to be even. See, this is what I don't want to have is right in the middle of a part, have that showing or, or the weave gets ugly because at one side of this is going to be very cosmetic. So the reason for finishing both sides is that you'll always pick the best of the two sides. There'll always be one little thread or something that isn't, it, it's just inevitable. But anyway, now the next thing is I want to lay a thin piece of blue tape across the edge here and use that as my cutting reference. So all this is going to do is give me a cutting guide and also keep the material relatively stable so the threads don't move around. And it's a pretty common uh, way of doing it. Not the only way. Now what I'm going to try to do, because I have this right up here, if it's my lucky day, and it always is, to be honest, it always is. We got to cut through that Kevlar string, which sometimes can be a little bit of an annoying thing. And what I decided to do, since I have to cut, I'm going to get two out of a slice, let's call it a slice. I'll make six laminates instead of five, make the piece a little bit thicker. We're going to have to mix the resin up accordingly. Get to the end here. And now what we have is the first of it. I'm going to repeat this so I have six pieces. Now I also want to have that down here I don't have this unraveling. That's going to be a pain. So I'm just going to for my purposes, just put this on the end. Again, this doesn't have to be fancy. None of this is going to appear in the final product. But I don't want to have is this unlimited amount of threads coming up, especially with twill. Twill is the worst. Now see, here's one a thread coming off already. And if you're making a structural part, like we just made a Corvette part for John Pothier's friend Bush, well, a structural part, you don't have to worry what it's going to look like. It's going to get buried under the hood or wherever it's going to go. But this part is going to be very cosmetic. It's going to show in various places wherever we use it. So now we're going to have to make, and I'll do them off camera, we're going to have to make, I'll measure the 24 because I need 18 by 24. It'll be pretty simple to figure out how to do that. Put a piece of tape at 24 inches, cut it down there and then do that three times. So I'll have six individual pieces of carbon. Now it is important on the parts of this that we're not using, and, and again, because this is relatively expensive and I don't want to take it and see threads missing and everything. Anyway, before I put this away, again, thank you to Dave and Dick Hewitt. Two people I've worked with for many years through modeling and through all of our adventures over the years. All of those things are on YouTube, by the way. And they have had some adventures. Okay, that's ready to put back in storage. And we're ready to go to the next step. Now, it's always super important. Because you have, with the resin that we're going to use, you have about a 45-minute window, maybe an hour. It's cool in here right now. So, to have all your material prepped up once you start laminating. That is always a key thing. You don't want to be mixing resin, have stuff all over your gloves, and then go over and try to cut another slice. Okay, this is the resin that we're going to use. Again, you can buy all of these supplies on Amazon, eBay, any place they work on boats, they sell West resin. Now, you're going to need, you should have, a glass jar, not plastic. 
a mixing cup you've got to make the ratio 3.7 to 1 or just a little less than 4 and you need a flux brush and I always put a piece of blue tape up on the end because this is a razor blade and I find out over and over it goes right through my gloves and then I got resin all over my fingers this is a this is a really good tip so that's what we need now and we just have to make sure the PVA is totally dry and we can mix up the resin but I don't want to mix the resin up ahead of time in theory if you it, it's best to work if you knew in a cool area 65 degrees not a great idea to be outside in the sun in 90 degree weather because this resin will kick off very quickly if you mix a big giant amount what's going to happen it's going to exotherm or, and catch fire so you only want to make as much as you can use in 45 minutes because by then it's going to turn to jello and you got to throw it away and mix another batch so we're going to carefully mix up what we think is the right amount if we have a little over mm, and I need a squeegee too to squeegee to sum of this out so with without further ado let's get the gloves on and get working now a couple of things that may be of some value well, this is always the way I do it I, and I don't know it's from years and years of making mistakes I guess I want to take one thing of hardener always now this is the clear hardener this is the more expensive of all the hardeners I think this is the most expensive but if you were going to use the resin up right away I think you could get away with using the cheaper stuff the cheaper stuff or less expensive if you don't use it up in some short amount of time it starts turning orange and then instead of a, a part that you want to see visible that you're going to see it what happens it it basically uh, it turns orange when you make it so now I need to add they always I always do the hardener first I don't ask me why it's just an old habit and this is not a super super critical thing what I'm gonna do is just by eyeball the last one will be it's supposed to be 3.7 if it's 3.8 or 3.6 nothing bad's gonna happen this is a very flexible resin it has almost no odor which is a big thing in my house it's a giant thing in fact because we don't want to uh, <laughs> we don't want to live in a stink pot that's for sure now another thing I don't know to be honest about this resin if it's one of the resins but there are many and I don't know because I've worked with Epon and other resins over the, over the time what some of them are if you mix them with a wooden paint stick the wood absorbs some of the chemicals that you want to be and you could lose some of your properties of the final product so now in a part like this that really isn't gonna matter but if you're making an aircraft propeller which we've made literally hundreds of when you make a part that needs the, the strength and integrity, well, that can be a real problem. Now, I wanted to show this in real time, of course. Here is the whole trick with any resin that I've learned. Biggest, biggest little tip that you think wouldn't matter, it matters. You make your life as easy as possible. This resin, if I mix it, you, you should mix it for a minute or two, but what I like to do is when I think it's mixed and it gets the one consistency and one, one uh, it'll still be clear, but it'll have a minimum of little streaks of white from the hardener. Then I want to mix this another two minutes, and I won't let the camera run, but mixing the resin is really a critical part of this whole process if you don't mix this and if you leave a bunch of unused resin up around here and it gets in and then it, it'll contaminate a part and you can have a soft spot right in the middle of a part that can be a part that it really doesn't cure properly and in a case like this we're just making a sheet if we were to have that we just move the pattern over but if you're making a propeller or you're making something that's got a structural part you don't want that to happen all right so I'm gonna just do this off camera for two minutes come back and we'll be ready to start making our part. We're going to take Gorilla Tape and three gallon cans. Because what I want to do with this, I want it to have it a way to drip. I don't want it to drip into the newspaper and just make a mess. This is an easy way to do it. Get the, the base plate, what I'll call the, the base plate, up off the table. I don't want to press that down and get my fingerprints in the PVA because the PVA, believe it or not, will pick up fingerprints. Now with that on there, the first part, 
I want to pour on some resin. I don't want to disturb that PVA. I don't want to start grinding away at it till I have some cloth on here. And a lot of this is going to come up. I've just very carefully dragged that across. Here is not to, not to tear up the PVA if possible. And by the way, it's, it's really important that the PVA be totally dry. If you try to do it while it's still wet, it kind of, mm, you run the risk, it's not going to, the part's not going to delaminate. Okay, so with that pretty well spread out, Now see, this is going to be the edge part, so this is the part we're going to see. So this is the part I want to really get as nice as possible. Because we're going to see the weave in this. Now notice I haven't mixed up all the resin at once because I don't want this all kicking off ahead of time. By having a smaller amount, I'm going to probably have to mix another batch. But what's going to happen, well, let me get a, uh, a squeegee. One second. Let's start to see how this is going to lay out. And it's this first part that's critical. This, I don't want to have any dry spots on this. Even though we're going to finish it at the very end, it just will just make it easier and it's a little more workmanlike if you can do this and keep that first laminate nice now this is the whole trick too as you pull up the resin and again this is the most critical one right here Now if we were making an aircraft part where weight was a super critical thing, one of the things we try to do is get the weight of the resin and the weight of the carbon to be pretty much 50-50. That would be a, a doable starting point unless you have an autoclave. And not everybody, I have one in a garage, but not everybody does. Not a real autoclave where you pressurize it, but it, it, basically an oven. And then we would have to post-cure the resin. I think this is going to be fine. Okay, now we've got the first, the first layer drawn out here. And I think we're ready to lay on. We've got good penetration on that. Ready to lay on a second layer. So I'll use whatever resin I have left here. And then I'm going to repeat this for all six, all six laminates. It's pretty cut and dry from this point on. I'm going to make a, like the equivalent of a peanut butter sandwich with uh, the peanut butter, the bread, the jelly, and another piece of bread. Now in this case, if we leave a little extra resin in here, nothing bad's going to happen. But again, this part is not going to be weight sensitive like it would be if it were, a, well, anything on a, and especially a model plane. The point is not to leave any dry spots. Okay, now I've got a good coat of resin on there now. Just go get another piece of cloth. And the most important thing is to keep each layer wet. Not to have dry pieces. I've left plenty of overage on this. So after this laminate, I'm going to wind up mixing some more resin, basically the same amount. That should do it for the whole part. And we're going to take each one, just like I'm doing right here. It's pretty cut and dry from this point on. Okay, we've come to the last, all six are on there. This is what I wanted to show to get that last layer, because this more than likely will be the side that we'll see. So I want to have plenty of resin on here when I put the other piece of glass on this and sandwich it in. And then that'll dry overnight. 
And from this piece, we should get several pieces, but I never, ever throw the scraps away. Because there's always something you can use the scraps for. So what I'm trying to do is get a nice, draw this out as much as I can. And this is the point at which you don't want to have a bunch of those loose threads flying around. If you don't have the blue tape, you wind up in a, uh, with a problem. And then you, you spend half your time picking them out. Okay, looks like we got this pretty nice. Now, the resin that I have left over here, and there's a, there's a good amount, is just going to be just for window dressing, really. We'll just let that drip off the edge. And that'll... When I put the other piece of glass on that, that should seal it in really nice. Okay, now we're just going to try to lay this on. It's not real critical. I want to get some weights on here to press out any of the extra resin. And this, all this is going to do is make finishing the part a little bit easier. In the fact that we'll have a flat, it won't be, well, let's hope it isn't. And I can work on this, try to get the air out. And the hardest part now is going to be to clean up. Cleaning up, this, this is messy work. <laughs> Like doing an oil change without an oil pan. <laughs> now, even if we don't get a perfect piece, we'll orient our pieces to use the best part of this. So now it's time for the best part of all, the big cleanup. Everything gets cleaned with alcohol before anything kicks off. So we have everything under like, six or eight gallon cans that probably are all three quarters full. That's going to sit overnight. We come back to it tomorrow or the next day and the glass should peel back and we should have our piece of laminate. And this MT-09, of course, has pretty much taken over my whole summer since Karen got it for me for my 75th birthday. What a great birthday present. Now, as our part sits and cooking, I want to make sure I thank all the healthcare workers. Thank you guys, one and all. I want to thank again Dave Midgley and Dick Hewitt and all the people that contribute things to YouTube. And there are, it's, my, it's endless. I, I feel guilty that I don't put enough up there of the things that I know, something that's worth sharing. I hope you've learned something. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I enjoy making them. And as always, thanks for watching.